Hello folks, I'm back with another one. Um I know it's the first one in a couple of weeks. I'm not I'm not actually uploaded for a while, so um I do apologise for that, but we have had some unexpected uh things come up. Um one being the car um our car just completely broke down out of nowhere. Um never to go again. Um so we was left without a vehicle. And, well, thank you, really, to some amazing generosity from friends and family rallying around um, to enable us to, to, to get another car. Um, but that's took time. That's, that's you know, been a search process, finding the right one and such. So, um, yeah, I've been occupied doing, doing that. And um, we've had something else to deal with, which... I'll probably mention on a different video. Um but yeah, I I just wanted to speak in this one um about the fear the fear of stopping. Um and whatever addiction you, you know you're going through or you've been through, maybe you can relate to what I'm about to to talk about. Um so the fear of stopping uh for me um in my experience is it's something that was massive, you know, it was a a big, big sort of barrier against uh, me sorting my life out. Um, and when I look back, was it a fear of stopping getting my fix in terms of gambling, um, playing slots, playing roulette, playing whatever... Uh, football bets or was it a fear of facing life where I have to live up you know live with things so I can't as use that as an escape if you get what I mean for me it's a bit of both um, so yeah I, I did escape to gambling I did use it as an escape and maybe you, with your addiction, do that too. Um, you know, if it's an argument with the partner, bugger it, I'm going to have a bet. If it's, you you know, financial problems, a bad day at work, bugger it, I'm going to have a bet or I'm going to use or whatever. Um, but for me, also, it's it was a... I, I, I'm stuttering because I'm finding it hard to explain. For me, when I look at slots, for example, that was sort of my favourite way of gambling, um, slots and roulette. I did fear not being able to do that anymore, not being able to play games that I love to play. Um, and although when I did play them, I was full of anxiety... I was full of high pressure situations where I'm needed to win most of the time. Um, and even though I knew it was wrong, it was still my buzz, if you like. Um, and fearing not being able to do that anymore um, would be, for me, equivalent to something else that I enjoy, which is going to football matches. Um, and worse really because I, I really enjoyed that to a level where uh you know playing slots and roulette to a level where I kept doing it over and over again and yeah the addiction and the escape is one thing but the enjoyment in playing them must have been there because why did I start in the first place you know that's but yeah the fear of stopping definitely um, was at large with me and it's only in recovery now I look back two and a half years on um, sorry I've not I've not got my usual setup my usual backdrop um, but I just wanted to get a video out uh, about this subject because I've been thinking about it quite a lot over the last couple of weeks and um, I did want to do a video on it um, but yeah with me in you know reflecting whilst I'm now two years, three months in recovery, what I've learnt to do 
is fill my time with things that aren't um, obviously related to having a bet, having a gamble. Um, and I think that's a big one because, yes, you will miss whatever, you know, if you enjoy doing something that much but it's become a problem, um, maybe financially or mentally, um, yes, you're going to miss it. You, you know, you're going to miss that buzz, that fix, that dopamine hit, whatever you want to call it, that escape. But there are other, other things that can fill that time, fill that void. And it may not seem like that when you first stop. It may not feel as though, oh, I can go and do this and it's, you know, I won't notice that I'm not gambling, I'm not using, I'm not doing whatever. But in time, it will feel that, you, you know, the more that you do, the more that you discover and brand new things. It doesn't mean to say you, you're going to go and do other things that you've always done. Maybe you discover another hobby, you know, lockdown aside, or even in lockdown, online, um, hobbies, interests. And I found that, and it really helped. Um, I've mentioned it before, I play eSports for RUFC eSports. I play FIFA. Um, and before that, I had an attitude towards gamers um, as, you know, your stereotypical um, they don't want to work, they sat in the bedroom, um, probably eating too much, with the curtains drawn, sweating and playing games all day while I'm working. But actually, I've found a different side to gaming where people are welcoming that, you know, you meet new people, be it online, be it on a headset, but in an organisation such as I play for, or UFC Sports, it's... More than that, we meet up and, you know, we have charity games and things. And it's all been beneficial to fill in that void for me. I'm only saying that because that's what worked for me. Maybe something along them lines or something that you've had an interest in before, but gambling or whatever addiction you're using have, have got in the way. Um, maybe you can have a look into doing something that maybe, like I said, in the past you've had an interest in. And maybe now you've stopped um, whatever addiction you're going through, you feel you can dedicate more time to that and therefore it will fill a void and hopefully make you happy. But in a in a good way, you know, in a way that you're not causing misery to yourself and others. But yeah, I do think there is this, when everything's stripped aside, you know, when everything's out on the table, you must get help or... I'm going to go in and get help. There is this fear that's within us, certainly with me, where but I can't just stop because it means I can never do that again. I, can, I can't do that. Or even if you're stopping for a short period, I can't stop for six months doing what I love to do. But reality is you can, and you can manage if it's an escape. You can manage without it. You know, friends and family, there's, it, it, it was really surprising how many people react in a positive way when you, you know, you speak about your problems and, you know, you enter into recovery and people can see that you're trying to change your life around. It's surprising how many people you don't expect to be supportive and help you and rally around you actually do. And two years on, I've seen that this week, like I said, in helping us purchase a vehicle. These are people who in the past I've done wrong with my gambling addiction, be it lying, cheating with money, whatever. I've done them wrong, but they've still rallied round and enabled us to get another vehicle um, and, and have us freedom. And like I said, what works for me won't work for everyone, but I think what is universal is there is other things to do um, away from your addiction that will fill the void, will give you happiness, however unlikely it seems, especially when you first stop. But yeah, I just wanted to speak about that, you know, the fear of stopping. Um, 
Because maybe that fear of stopping stops you getting help, stops you speaking out. But trust me, I've been there when I thought there's nothing else can replace this buzz. There's nothing else um, can give me the excitement, the escape, the the dopamine, it, the, the absolute bubble that gambling addiction gave me. But reality is that there is other things out there. Maybe it won't seem like that now for you. If you have just stopped or you, you may be thinking about stopping your addiction. But in future, you will see for yourself there is other things. But yeah, I just wanted to, like I said, just share my thoughts on that. I have been thinking about it quite a bit and I wanted to, to put a video out. It's not in my usual studio. Um, it's a different backdrop and things. But you may see a couple of more like this. Maybe when I'm doing walk, walking, so I'm going to try and lose a little bit of weight. I'll, I'll bang the video out. Um, but yeah, if you if you have found this um, something that you you know find beneficial, or maybe you can just relate. If you could leave me a like on the video, um, leave a comment. Let me know. Let me know if you can relate and your experiences. And um, yeah, I'm thank you to the subscribers as well. The count's going up. Um, and I think the ice videos at 4,000 now, um, which is unbelievable to say I only started in late December and the support that I've had on this channel has been fantastic. So thank you all again. Um, yeah, and I'll catch you on the next one, folks. Stay safe.